Step into the enchanting realm of fan fiction wannabe, where creativity knows no limits. Are you prepared to immerse yourself completely in the mesmerizing universe of fan fiction? Look no further, for you've come to the right place. Remember to give that thumbs up and subscribe to become a part of our extraordinary community. Now, let's delve into the tale that awaits. All Things Must Die. Part 4 Raven! Ajban jolted awake in the dead of night with a ragged gasp, heart hammering, skin soaked in sweat. A curse leaped from his lips as he fought free from the dream. No. Not a dream. Nightmare. His mind screamed in fear and anguish, and his chest ached in the worst of ways. When he looked down, there was no wound to be had. But he'd seen it all the same. Felt it. Lived every moment. He'd seen the blade pierce through her back. Heard the gasp that followed. He'd seen vicious glowing eyes like poisoned honey, burning with flame. And he knew it was no dream. The spring maiden was dead. Slain at the hands of Cinderfall. What's happening? Oscar flailed in his mind. Ajpin? What was that? Wrapped up in his moment of panic, the immortal ignored Oscar's frantic pleas. Young hands flailed in the dark for an enemy that wasn't there. Sweaty palms scrabbled at thin sheets and flung them away as he lurched out of bed to land nimbly on his feet. Or rather, he would have, had Oscar's body not failed him. Not yet accustomed to such rapid movements, he tripped and smashed his skull against an ill-placed dresser. Stars burst before his vision as the world burned a ghastly shade of red. Aura flared, and pain blazed through his forehead. Ironically, this proved just the jolt he needed, for the sudden jolt served to clear his head and banish that brief beat of bestial panic. Er, It also left him stunned on the floor, with his eyes spinning. Ha! Huh? Crow's bleary voice called in the dark. Was it? Oz? You all right? No. No, no, no. He couldn't tell him. Not here. Not now. Everything would fly apart. I'm fine, Crow. Ajpin groaned, clutching his head. Just fell out of bed. Go back to sleep. Ajpin waited until he was certain his old friend had done just that. Only then did he dare to drag himself upright. He didn't want to wake the others. Doing so would only panic them, or worse, terrify them. He daren't tell them what he'd seen in his dreams. This was his secret to keep. It was better this way. Revealing the truth would only imperil those under his care. Even telling Crow brought an inherent risk. The truth would send him howling after Raven's killer. Anyone who could murder a maiden would make short work of him. Worse, if that truly was Cinder he'd seen, well. The implications were less than pleasant. Cinder was dead. She had to be, or else Ruby wouldn't have inherited her power. Yet he'd clearly seen that vicious woman ram her blade through Raven's back. Impossible as it might seem, the madwoman had defied death. She'd be just as powerful as before, if not more so. Spring had always been the greatest of the four seasons, and somehow, he doubted fate would be so kind as to bestow Raven's powers on Tian. He knew what was coming. They'd have to intensify Ruby's training. Grasping for his cane in the dark, the former headmaster of Beacon found it and paced to the window. He flung it open and saw the storm raging in the distance. He scowled. It had been such a peaceful evening, too. Ruby's training had been progressing at a decent pace, and Salem had been silent for some time now. She'd been bested at Haven, her agents routed and forced to lick their wounds. He dared to think they were safe because of that. He'd been a fool. Now the darkness felt heavy, thick and cloying, like a dense fog clouding his vision. Ajpin? This time, there could be no denying Oscar's worry. He bleated in the back of his head like a frightened animal. Are we? Peace, Oscar, he murmured. We're not in any danger at this time. That was merely a vision. Someone died, didn't they? He couldn't lie to him. Yes, Oscar. Ashbin sighed. Yes, someone did. He made the maidens. Their magic was his own, a gift he'd granted them in a bygone age, a time when he'd been, more than this. So much more. Still, the power that he parted with remained a part of him. He could sense when they used their gifts, no matter the distance. 
he knew when they passed on. Often it would be through old age, but sometimes, sometimes their end was sharper, more sudden. What he'd felt just now, what he'd seen, was more akin to a knife in his back than anything else. He knew this feeling all too well. In the room adjacent to their own, he heard little Miss Rose sob softly in her sleep. Poor girl. As the fall maiden, she'd sensed it too. There was nothing he could do for her. Raven was dead. Ruby wept softly in her sleep. Geez, sis. What kind of nightmare are you having? Jan sighed and tucked her little sister just a bit closer in bed, curling her body around the smaller girl in a vain attempt to comfort her. Or protect her from whatever she was seeing. It had to be something nasty if she wasn't waking up. The poor thing was latched onto her like a limpet and holding on for dear life. Hey, she whispered and ran a hand over her sister's head, doing her best to soothe her fears. You're okay. You're safe. You're here with us. Ruby whimpered, but slowly, gradually, her cries quieted. Yang turned her head and risked another glance outside. She could see the storm in the distance from her window, far enough not to be a threat to Haven, yet still audible and visible all the same. Fingers of forlorn lightning lanced through the dark sky. Great purple bolts split the heavens above. Around them, the clouds seemed to writhe and whirl as she gazed on, twisting and snarling in impossible places. Almost as if someone were actively controlling them, bending the very heavens to their will. A few months ago, she would have dismissed such a sight out of hand. Now she knew better. Only a maiden could do that. Was Raven out there somewhere? Was she fighting someone? A sudden breeze brushed Yang's cheek, invisible fingers caressing her visage as it threaded through her golden hair. She frowned and shook her head, batting the strange feeling away. Stupid window. Why did she leave the damn thing open? She felt cold. Why was she so damn cold? Her thoughts twisted uncomfortably, and in a fit of pique, she stomped them down. She's coming. Until she heard the voice. Jan looked left. Jan looked right. Jan found nothing. Weiss and Blake were still sound asleep in their cots. Ruby made not a peep beside her. So who the devil was talking to her? I'm sorry, Jan. Be better than I was. At first. She thought it was just her mind playing tricks on her or an overactive imagination. These words were little more than a whisper on the wind, so soft that she had to strain her ears just to hear them. But she did hear them. Try though she might to ignore it, a cold, awful feeling tore at her chest, and a pit opened in her stomach. Because this time, she'd recognize those words and the voice behind them. Harsh, bitter tears sprang to her eyes, accompanied by a pang of dread. A lone word leaped to her lips. Mom! This time, the darkness didn't answer her. Arthur what's preened proudly as he watched the world burn around him. Some might call him cruel for this. Perhaps he was. Salem's plan had been quite inspired, as hers most often were. Her instructions were clear. She told him to divide and conquer today, and so he had. Now there were none left to oppose them. Mercury was a helpless mess at their feet without the use of his legs unable to do anything more than glower at him. Emerald stood paralyzed by indecision, dithering helplessly on the sidelines as she waited for her mistress to make her decision. Cinder herself was fixed firmly in his sights, her face stony as she watched the village vanish under a tide of grim. Its leader and purported god, utter nonsense, was too preoccupied by Raven and the relic of destruction to intervene on their behalf, while that meddling little imp of his was occupied with Tyrion. There was no need for Watts to dirty his hands here. He'd leave that to the coward and the madman. And so he watched everything fall apart. So uncivilized. He sighed, listening to their screams. Wouldn't you agree, Cinder? She didn't respond. A pity, but not unexpected. She likely had some aim here, and now that they'd ruined it, she was sulking. Cinder would never fall prey to sentiment, which meant she would never betray Salem. Their queen was eternal. Immortal. Why, he dares say she was inevitable. No matter how you sliced it, hers was clearly the winning side in this war. This Naruto. Fellow had been foolish indeed to poke his nose where it didn't belong. Now he would pay with his life. 
Yes, all variables were accounted for. Hazel's absence was troubling, to be sure, but if he turned traitor, they'd deal with him eventually. What's rather looked forward to it? He'd never gotten along with that brute. Too sentimental. Too soft. Always trying to spare lives, never willing to go the extra mile. His vendetta lay with Ashbin and no one else. If he'd lost sight of that, then perhaps it was time they put him out to pasture with the rest. He was still watching Cinder like a hawk when the world shook and the skies darkened overhead. Finally, a voice like thunder rattled the ground, followed by a shrill scream. The flash of light that followed was almost blinding to behold in the night. He found himself forced to raise an arm and guard his gaze against it. Laughter followed, and it was not the laughter of a man but a woman. It didn't belong to anyone he knew. A cold shiver stole over him, but he mastered himself, shook his head, and turned his gaze back to Cinder. What's frowned in mild irritation? What the devil was that? Nothing to concern yourself with. Wait. That didn't sound like Cinder. Some sixth sense warned him at the last moment. Or perhaps it was the breeze. Regardless, he wasn't quick enough. A blade bit through Aura and slammed into his back, causing his eyes to bulge. Cold steel slid through his ribs, scraping bone, and a choked breath tore itself past his lips as he arched his back. His mustache twitched as he stared down at the crimson stain spreading across his jacket. How? When? He hadn't even heard them coming. Twitching, he craned his neck back to gaze upon his attacker. Neo granted him a feral grin. Why, you little cretin? A snarl leaped from his lips. I'll have your head. Watts tried to turn as she ripped her weapon free, tried to fight back, tried to bring his revolver to bear, but the little devil anticipated him. Even as he drew, Neo danced forward, her blade lancing into his guard to find his wrist. It was a clean cut. He barely felt it, at first. Then came the pain. It blinded him to all else, leaving his gun to tumble free from nerveless fingers as he roared in pain. Someone else swept in and hamstrung him from behind, sweeping a naked edge against the back of his ankles to send him stumbling forward. And so did Arthur Watts, great genius that he was, crumpled to the ground with nary a sound. Cinder, you fool! He cried! Control your minions before they kill me. Frantic, he turned his head, searching for aid. There was none to be had. Cinder waved at him and vanished before his very eyes like a desert mirage. She wasn't there. Perhaps she never had been. Ah, uh, so that's how it was. He understood what had happened now. He'd been deceived. Emerald hadn't stood there without reason. She'd had him under her semblance the entire time. Was this what defeat felt like? To think he'd almost forgotten this bitter taste of it. Someone filched the remote from his coat pocket as he bled out, wasted and gasping for air. Don't mind me. Emerald's voice hummed in his ear. I'll just be borrowing this. Not a moment later, an ominous click rose in his ears. Oh dear. The good doctor had a fleeting moment to realize his blunder before a shadow fell over him. Without that device locking down Mercury's metal legs, that mouthy brat would be free to move as he pleased. Sure enough, a heavy heel came down on one of his legs, producing a horrible crack. He cried out, and the boot stomped down harder. Don't worry, what's? Emerald flicked her weapon away. We'll keep you alive. We still need a sacrifice for Neo. Don't we? The little hellion nodded sagely. What's croaked out a gasp? sacrifice. They didn't deign to answer that question. Mercury sneered down at him all too happily. Nighty night, Doc. An iron boot snapped into Arthur's chin and sent a tooth whistling into the air. Spring. It sang through Cinder's veins like a nameless song she couldn't quite place, surging and swirling in her body with all the force and fame of its name. It was strength. It was power. It stole her breath away. And what a breath it was. She felt complete again. Whole. As if a missing piece of her soul had slotted back into place. For if fall was death, then spring was rebirth. Her rebirth. New life and strength and power. Raven's death had granted her wings here and now, and she used them to rise from the ashes of her former self like a great phoenix reborn. 
A triumphant shout tore from her throat as she cried her victory to the world. Finally, on a whim, the new maiden spread her arms on either side of her body and raised them into the sky. Her new powers responded easily, eager to please. A great gale tugged her form into the air and held her aloft as her eyes burned afresh with crimson flames. She could see them in her mind's eye, like tongues of scarlet fire licking at the edges of her vision. The dark curtain of her hair found itself burgeoned by the storm engulfing her, fanning out over her shoulders in a rich ebony curtain. She gazed down at her hands and grinned, a bright and euphoric smile stretching across her face. Gods, she missed this feeling. Fire flickered at her fingertips, burning hungrily in her palms. Lightning rippled through dark clouds above her head, echoed by a fresh peal of thunder. An almighty gale keened through the air when she waved her hand through the night. Even the very earth trembled beneath her will. This, this was the power of the Spring Maiden. No wonder she'd lost to Raven. Maidens grew stronger as they came to realize their powers. And this? It wasn't the power of a fully realized maiden, but it was close, very close indeed. Made her fall powers look paltry by comparison. When the first fitful raindrops came, Cinder threw her head back and gloried in them. Here at last, she had control. And so much more. Perhaps she owed some of that to him. Perhaps her training truly had made her stronger. Perhaps her time without the maiden powers made her appreciate them all the more. Perhaps she was simply more attuned to the power of spring. Regardless, she felt stronger now than she'd ever been. Vengeance was hers. And soon, very soon, she would have it again. You'll regret this. A familiar, sullen voice whispered in the back of her head. That power is a curse. Aha, and there she was. Raven's aura, or rather the last dregs of it, was fused with the might of the Spring Maiden, and now her own. Aura was the soul, after all, and naturally, with those dregs came some portion of the woman's memories and emotions. Some semblance of her very self. Her strength. Her fear. Her arrogance. Her cowardice. Her pride. Team SDRQ. A girl with silver eyes. And there, beneath it all, an irritating fondness for a mouthy girl. For her daughter. These treacherous feelings threatened to swallow her victory, to whisper doubts in her ear. Cinder shoved them into the back of her mind before they could take root deep in her heart. Says the dead woman. Cinder scoffed instead, her smile shrinking as her joy turned sour. Can't you rest in peace? You know I'm right. You'll be hunted for this. Then I'll reclaim what is mine and become stronger still. The new maiden huffed. Haven is close by, no? A jolt of fear snapped through her, fear that wasn't hers. Stay away from Yang and Ruby. Calm yourself. I have no interest in your daughter. But I will have what is mine. HRMPH. More whispers from a dead woman. Cinder ignored them. They meant nothing. She'd expected as much, even experienced it once before, when she truly became the Fall Maiden. Amber had haunted her for days after the Battle of Beacon. Raven's nattering would prove short-lived. She would fade in time. All things faded. All things died. All things must die. But here, in this moment, Cinder felt immortal. Invincible. A peal of delighted laughter echoed over her shoulder and stole such thoughts away. With a supreme effort of will, the Spring Maiden lowered herself to the earth. So lost had she been in her shining moment of glory that she'd all but forgotten her surroundings. A dull pang of dread bloomed in her bosom as the laughter redoubled, taking on a wild, almost manic note. It had been freeing to lose herself in her new powers, but now she regretted doing so. Because she'd forgotten about Kagaya. Only a stone's throw to the east, the mad goddess stood tall among the burning trees, gazing at pale, bloodied hands with rapturous glee. She didn't even seem to notice Raven's corpse at her feet, nor that her kill had clearly stolen her kill. If she did, she certainly didn't show it. Cinder stood among the burning forest, eyes wide and unblinking as wild shadows danced across her face. And the goddess laughed. How wonderful! She purred with the voice of a thousand angels as she flexed her fingers. I'd almost forgotten what it felt like to breathe again. To be whole. She flicked her gaze to Tyrion's corpse, 
No, not a corpse, Cinder realized with feigned horror. Somehow the maimed man and was still moving, frantically trying to crawl away using nothing but his chin. Like some deranged inchworm. Without his arms and two broken legs besides, he wasn't much of a threat. He'd been so proud before. Now he was a shadow of his former self. She almost pitied him. Kagaya did not. My, my, my! She sauntered after the faunus with slow steps. Still alive, are we? No! Terror rid itself across Tyrion's face as he redoubled his efforts. Please! Have mercy! My dear boy! The rabbit goddess shook her head slowly, as though lecturing a naughty child. There is no mercy. Cinder turned away before she could witness his final fate. This was the monster Naruto had warned her of. She found herself torn, caught between the desire to stand and fight and then the urge. Raven's instincts be damned, to retreat into the shadows while the goddess was distracted with her victim. In another lifetime, she would have challenged her outright without hesitation but she'd learned. Appearances could be deceiving. This woman had hijacked his body and used it to pick Tyrion and Raven apart like schoolyard bullies. Still, she didn't look that tough. Odd to be sure, but she almost felt she could take this woman, this parasite, with her powers. A gleam of metal caught her gaze in the flames. There, before her very eyes, the relic of destruction lay some yards away, forgotten in the chaos as Kagaya preened over herself. Cinder gazed at the sword longingly. In another lifetime, she would have wanted it solely for the power it presented her. Now, she gazed at it for another reason. This was a tool of the gods. A weapon forged for one purpose and one purpose alone. Surely that would make all the difference. Perhaps she could even use it to destroy Kagaya without risking the body she inhabited. Her heel inched forward. Kagaya was busy tormenting Tyrion, and that meant she wasn't looking her way. She could do this. Snatch the relic up, get the drop on her, drive the blade into the beast's blackened heart. She just had to be quick about it. Very quick. She'd seen how agile the woman could be. A mistake might well cost her life. You'll never make it! Raven's voice hissed. She'll get you! Quiet coward! Flames burst from her palms and flung her forward. All the world turned to a blur of burning wood and ruined ground. Cinder ignored it all, her gaze focused on a single point. If she still had her grim arm, this would have been a simple matter of stretching it out to claim the relic from afar. Instead, she had to get close, and that brought risks of its own. Still, Cinder was certain she'd make it. She closed the distance in an instant. She stretched her hand out, fingertips brushing the hilt. Got you! A pale hand closed around her wrist and wrenched it away with a painful crack. Cinder cried out as the bones of her wrist ground together, pinching nearly every nerve in her right arm. Horrible white eyes dominated her vision, and despite her best efforts, she found herself recoiling. It was the smile that did it, not Kagaya's sudden proximity. What kind of speed was that? She hadn't seen her move. Tyrion wasn't making any more noise, and she could only assume he was dead or dying. That left her alone and far far too close to an angry goddess. You must be Cinder. Kagai cooed. It's so nice to finally meet you, face to face. She didn't sound happy. Not at all. The pleasure is mine. Snarky little thing, aren't you? The grip on her wrist turned agonizing, bones fracturing under the goddess's grip. It was all she could do not to scream. Such a pretty face. I can see why he's so sweet on you. Her eyes drifted to the relic, just out of reach. I am almost tempted to let you take it. Kagaya's dulcet tones purred in her ear as she drew her closer still. If only to see you suffer. Those cold, bleak eyes seemed to break through to her very soul as she spoke. To watch your fear overcome you, destroy you, see it corrupt your heart, and drive you mad. Pale eyes narrowed. But I think not. She seized the sword by the hilt and cast it away into the burning wood, sending it skittering out of sight. That's better, she hummed. Now then, slap. Kagaya's head snapped backward as Cinder's palm cracked across her face. Pale eyes narrowed to hooded slits. You dare? Cinder wanted to weep, and not just from the pain. 
Instead, she slapped her again, snapping the woman's head to the one side. Fool. She'd been a fool. She thought she had a chance. What had she been thinking? She knew she stood no chance against this creature. Raven had been so much stronger than her, armed with a relic and help, and she'd still lost. She might be able to fight. Perhaps even her only way was to wake Naruto up, snap him out of whatever trance he'd fallen into, and leave this to him. Give him back! I think not. Kagaya caught her wrist and wrenched it down. He's lost to you. Her face twitched, but she mastered it. Pale eyes blazed blue for the merest of moments. Cinder pounced on it like a cat. He's not, is he? A cruel smile bloomed upon her lips. You're lying. Kagai gazed back at her with those milky white orbs and smiled. Then that smile turned cruel. Neil. Cinder bristled. I beg your pardon? Are you deaf, child? I am your goddess. I told you to kneel. Compulsion struck the spring maiden like a physical force, and her legs buckled beneath her. She nearly bent the knee then and there, and it was only through sheer fury that she managed to resist the command at all. This was the creature Naruto had dedicated his life to seal. This. This was a living goddess. Salem was nothing compared to this. And still you resist. Kagai chided her, striding forward to seize her by the chin. You, who are not but a child compared to my might. You dare to strike me? Cinder's arm swung back and Kagaya casually caught it with her free hand. She pulled. Cinder gritted her teeth as something popped in her shoulder, and her arm fell slack. Her vision went black for a moment. Then came the pain. A soundless shriek tore past her lips, only to find itself muffled against a palm as the rabbit goddess reached down again to grab her by the face once more. I could kill you with a flick of my wrist, she snarled, wrenching her head aside. Unmake you a dozen different ways. Rip your very soul from your benighted corpse. Then what's stopping you? She expected another outburst. What she received instead was chilling. What indeed? But there are worse things than death. Kagaya took that pale hand away from her mouth and used it to cup her chin instead, pale thumb running over her face. I could strip that precious power from you, you know. Cast you down and hear her smile turn most vicious indeed. Make you the little girl you truly are on the inside. Or perhaps I could break you and turn you into a slave. Would you like that? Cinder twitched but didn't dignify her with a response. There it is. There's the fear. And still, Kagaya continued, peering into the depths of her heart as though she were an open book. You cannot hide from my eyes. I see you for what you are. You're a child, Cinder. A lonely, wretched, miserable little child. One longing not for wealth or prestige as you'd have others think, but attention and oh! Her grin stretched further still. What's this? You don't want power. She tilted her head, seeming to consider her in a new light. Not really. Not anymore. Her eyes lit as they saw into the darkest corner of her being. You want a family? Cinder stiffened. Nonsense. You want to be loved? Kagaya crooned in delighted disbelief, laughing over her denial. Even now you secretly pine for the affection of a man who's forgotten what love even feels like. A sneer overtook her fine features, warping them into something hideous. How precious! How sweet! You, the monster, the murderer, actually want to have children. Silence! Cinder's head snapped up and her eyes burned with fresh flame. The intensity was such that her gaze momentarily turned red. That was all the warning Kagaya had before her victim screamed, that, and the faint light burning in the back of her throat. She frowned at it for a moment, not quite comprehending what it was. It was fire. Cinder spat a wave of vicious napalm right in her face, and the rabbit goddess toppled backward with nary a sound. Popping her shoulder back into place, the spring maiden stood and leaped back to gain some distance. Then she thrust both hands forward and showered Kagaya's still form with a wave of fresh flame. Her power restored and more, she flung it all at the false goddess with a shriek. You think you know me? She howled. You. No. Nothing. Each word brought a fresh volley of fire to bear upon her. 
Each blast rattled the ground itself, scorching heaven and earth alike. Nothing of what I've seen, what I've been through. You have no right to look through my thoughts. My dear, Kagaya walked right through the fire and the flames to stand before her, untouched. Has this ever worked? Cinder felt her jaw click open. A contemptuous backhand cracked across her face and snapped it shut. The sheer impact ripped her free from the ground and sent her skidding down the lane like a squirrel in a hurricane. Kagaya loped after her, almost lazily. He cares for you, you know. The rabbit goddess mocked as she stumbled upright. Well, inasmuch as he can care about anything these days. She spoke the words with relish, savoring every second of torment on her face as she drew near. I wonder how he'll react when I bring him your head. Will he break, I wonder? Will he weep? Will he wail? The only one crying here is you. Cinder whirled, summoned a pair of blades to her hands, and flung herself at the self-proclaimed deity. Kagaya met her all too happily. They raged back and forth like a pair of demons, whirling and striking, slashing and cutting in a mad melee of hellish proportions. It wasn't enough. She soon realized that her skills with the blade meant nothing to Kagaya. It was like trying to fight a hurricane with sticks. You couldn't. Kagaya didn't need a blade to match her. She used her bare hands and her hair, that was just cheating, to ward her off time and time again. And that was to say nothing of the woman's offense. Every block left Cinder's bones creaking angrily, and what blows she did land meant next to nothing for her foe. Every injury healed nearly instantly. So she drew back and turned a hand to the heavens. Fresh power surged through her, and a torrent of lightning fell from the skies to strike Kagaya dead in the chest. Here at last, the rabbit goddess gasped in surprise. Cinder felt a brief flare of pride deep in her chest as she watched the woman squirm. Dirty and disheveled she might well be, but at least she'd managed to hit the bitch once. Was that petty of her? Very much so. Did she care? Not at all. That is, until Kagaya laughed and flung it back in her face. Every muscle in Cinder's body clamped down as one, and she toppled to a knee, or a crackling angrily. My, my! Her tormentor laughed softly behind a raised hand as she watched her spasm. That felt quite pleasant. Do try again, dear girl. It's been ages since I've had a chance to stretch my legs. She jerked her head to the right, then the left, producing an agonizing pop with each motion. I hope you'll forgive me if I prolong this a bit. Now, let's start with your eyes. Bite me. Kagaya scoffed at her. Tsk, T-S-K. Language, my dear. A boulder crashed into her back and sent her flying over Cinder's head. Cinder blinked through bleary eyes, trying to piece together one moment and the next as she gasped for breath that refused to come. She hadn't been the one to create that rock, much less throw it. Who then? Neither Emerald nor Mercury possessed the raw strength to fling something like that around. Who? A large arm wrapped her waist and hoisted her upright as though she weighed no more than a child. Stand? A familiar voice grunted. There's work to be done. Cinder did as she was bayed, glowering all the while. Sure enough, she found him looming over her. Hazel. she not expected him to return from wherever the devil he'd run off to. Naruto hadn't said, and she'd come to assume he'd simply return to Salem's side. For him to be here now wasn't just a stroke of luck. It was nothing short of divine intervention. Another hit, and she would have lost an eye or worse. He pressed the sword into her hands as her aura flickered fitfully. Don't lose it. When she looked down, the relic of destruction burned bright in her grasp. Cinder balked at it. Emeralds nearby. A large hand dwarfed her shoulder. Be mindful and don't give her away, or we'll lose our advantage. No wonder he'd been able to sneak up on Kagaya. Doubtless she'd figure out the trick soon enough but a slim chance was better than none, she supposed. Ah, and now the gentle giant enters the fray. Kagaya rose, dusted herself off, and sketched a curtsy that just reeked of arrogance. But not so gentle, is he? She smiled and touched a dainty finger to one cheek. Hazel the dullard, Hazel the murderer, Hazel the betrayer. What of it? The stout man frowned. Your words mean nothing to me. Whatever would your sister think of you now? Regardless of his intent, 
Kagaya found the chink in his armor with ease. You sold your soul to the devil, and for what? Revenge? Against a deathless man? Ha! Pearly white teeth flashed out at them in another ghastly grin. The grim killed your sister, and you joined their master. The giant didn't bat an eyelash. I've made peace with who I am and what I've done. You really have, haven't you? Kagaya sighed airily and shook her head. More's the pity. It's no fun when I can't torment my victims. Cinder twitched. She had been silent for some time now, allowing her aura to slowly trickle back in. For all her claims of being a goddess, Kagaya struck her as a petty creature. A vengeful soul lashing out at everyone and everything near her. Someone who cared for naught but herself. She delighted in causing pain, agony, and misery. And for what? Did she derive some sick pleasure out of it? Everything she did was for a purpose. Kagaya was simply cruel for the sake of being cruel. We're not yours to torment. My dear Cinder. Kagaya crooned briefly in Naruto's voice, the words gone jagged and cruel. Everyone is my victim. Everyone is mine to torment. She spread her arms wide to each side, as though to beseech the very heavens themselves. Really, you have no one to blame but yourselves for this. He befriended you, he formed bonds with you, so naturally you must die. And your deaths will make him suffer. Thunder rumbled overhead and the fitful raindrops began to intensify, but still her smile remained beatific. Everything he has ever made must be undone. Such is the punishment he deserves for delaying me. Hazel slammed a fresh dust cylinder into his arm and started forward. Kagaya titted softly and moved to meet him. Careful now. Defy me, and you may destroy any chance of seeing your sister in this lifetime. Hazel did not rise to the bait. No one will die today, save you. Begone, parasite. As Cinder looked on, the man's muscles began to twist and bulge beneath his coat. Another cylinder followed, and the coat tore itself to shreds. He shrugged his shoulders at the loss and stormed onward footsteps like an avalanche. Then came a third syringe. He grunted and cracked his knuckles as muscles swelled further still, lending him a monstrous appearance. Yet a fourth syringe came and went in the blink of an eye, only to be discarded with its brethren over his rapidly swelling shoulders. Kagaya paused, brow furrowing in concern. You would destroy your body to face me? Hazel didn't answer. Hazel blurred. Even as Kagaya's hair surged in to entrap him, the giant broke through and struck her across the face. It was a good punch, all things considered. Unlike Cinder's earlier slap, Hazel's fist struck with sound and fury, shattering her defenses to send the proud woman sprawling in the dirt. Kagaya got right back up, and he smashed her down before she could mount a defense. She reared back and tore a bloody trench in his chest in recompense, only to lose the limb as he tore it clean off. He bewled through, grabbed her by the skull, and slammed her body into the dirt. It was his semblance, Cinder realized. Hazel couldn't feel pain, and he fought all the better for it. It pained her to admit it, but in terms of sheer physical prowess, he had always been the better fighter. When the goddess lashed out, he caught her remaining arm and reached in to snap off one of the horns atop her head. Even as Kagai gasped, Hazel reared back with the shard in his grasp, then drove it through her third eye. Kagai yelped and slammed a hand at his kidney, only to inexplicably miss what should have been a lethal blow. Kagai whipped around and found Emerald lurking behind a tree. Little bitch! The thief ducked just as a strange ashen spike leaped from the woman's sleeve and jabbed at the space she had occupied. It struck a tree and left it to crumble like so much ash. When Kagai lashed out again, Hazel stepped in, and Cinder moved to flank him. Kagaya snarled and struck out with her hair, to no avail. Yet again, she failed to find her target once again thanks to Emerald's meddling. Meddling ants! Just die already! Cinder saw her opening and lunged. In her hands, the relic of destruction burned angry and bright to score an angry line down Kagaya's back. The goddess whirled on her, only for Hazel to yank her back by the hair. And so the dance went. Together, the three of them made progress. Slow, gradual progress. Looking back, Cinder would wonder why they had fared so well. Perhaps Kagaya didn't quite have control of Naruto's body yet. 
Maybe she was weakened from being contained for so long. Perhaps they had just gotten lucky so far. The last one was more likely. Naruto had spoken at length about what Kagaya was capable of. If she had the full breadth of her powers at her disposal, they would have been so much dust on the winds. Maybe that was his doing, why he didn't show himself. Regardless, the tide was turning in their favor. Until, quite suddenly, it tipped over. That's enough. White eyes flickered into blue without warning, and Kagaya froze. It was an abrupt thing indeed. One moment she had been ready to skewer them all, the next her lips moved of her own volition, and she fell to a knee. Even then, Cinder didn't dare approach. Kagaya had already proven that she was capable of deceit. She wouldn't get close unless she knew it to be him. Naruto! Kagaya's head snapped up, bearing bright blue eyes. No! They burned an unholy white knot a beat later. I will not be denied! Vengeance will be mine! You don't have a choice. Her body wrenched itself as though struck by a great blow. I've had enough of you. I will destroy everything you've ever loved. And I'll be there to stop you. When the rabbit goddess shrieked, everyone flinched against it, wincing before that awful, high-pitched sound. She threw her head back as a crack etched itself across her pallid face. Then another. And another. Another still as they looked on. Long nails clutched at her skull as though trying to hold it together through sheer willpower, and failing. Shards of flaky gray fell away from her face, exposing a blue eye and whiskered cheeks lurking beneath. It made for a bloody spectacle as that half-and-half -half face gazed at them. This isn't over! Her lone eye found Cinder and locked on with all her might. I'll get out again, and when I do... You're dead! All of you! Dead? Her remaining horn receded, pale hair falling out as a shaggy blonde mane emerged from beneath. It's over. You've lost. Now give me back my body. No. Her body didn't break. It crumbled. Like peeling back a layer of dead skin to reveal life beneath, so too did the last of her peel away from Naruto's body. An arm tore free from her wide sleeve, followed by a leg. Pale lips parted in one final wordless cry as the blank canvas that was her visage gained color that had been there before. Everything fractured. She fell forward like a husk, leaving her host behind as she crumbled away to nothing. What remained of her shattered as she struck the ground, leaving naught but ashes behind. Naruto staggered out of the ashen shell on wobbly legs. Well, he croaked softly. That was unpleasant. Something in his voice broke Cinder. Perhaps he was being too blasé about his near-death experience. Perhaps she was simply fed up with him. Who could say? She wasn't sure what it was that set her off, only that he did, and she was having none of it. Even as Naruto stumbled forward, she moved to meet him. Her heels clicked harshly against the turned stones, eyes burning in the rain. With the rabbit goddess gone, it finally fell freely upon them, a warm spring rain that soaked her to the bone. Cinder didn't care. Her eyes burned with fresh flame. She'd found her target, and she would not be denied. Not after what she'd been through. Not this time. Imbecile! A muscle jumped angrily in her jaw as she walked. Words tumbled from her mouth like wine. Of all the reckless, arrogant, pig-headed. Oh. Naruto saw her coming and raised a hand. Now, wait just a second. I know you're angry. I can explain. Hazel winced at the poor choice of words as Cinder slapped the relic into his hands. Cinder? Cinder absolutely twitched. Angry? No, no, no. She was beyond anger. Well and truly beyond it. Kagaya had aired truths she'd rather not speak of, and worse, Naruto knew them. Oh, he'd keep quiet about them, to be sure but that wasn't what had her blood boiling in her veins. He'd given up, handed this fight to her, and expected her to make the right decision. She had, of course, she always would, but the knowledge burned all the same. She stepped into Naruto, grabbed him by the face. Never again. The blonde blinked back at her. It's really not that simple. She pinched his cheeks. Never. Again. For a fleeting instant, she thought he might protest. Naruto looked like he wanted to. In the end, his shoulders slumped. 
All right, all right, I give. I'll try not to let that happen a second time. Try. He capitulated with a shrug. Good. Because after this? She flung a hand at the chaos around them. You're mine. Objections will not be tolerated. They both knew she was trying to save face. She'd been worried about him, damn it. But she'd never speak the words. Not aloud. Gods above, she could feel Emerald and Hazel gazing at her. There would be a reckoning for this. She knew that. Right now. She was too tired to care. She just wanted to bury her head in a pillow and sleep. But first. She would have what she was owed. His cheeky grin warmed her in ways it shouldn't have. But it did all the same. Wait, does that mean? Cinder yanked his head down with a growl and crushed her mouth against his. Ah, he hummed when she pulled away. You do care. Cinder glowered daggers at him. Shut up, fool. She still kissed him again. Salem saw it all. Ensconced within her tower, she reclined upon her throne and observed the spectacle with singular focus. None noticed the tiny nevermore watching them from the bough of a nearby tree. None knew that the Queen of the Grim saw through its eyes as if they were her own. How could they? She hadn't told them. And so she watched the ambush, saw the chaos that followed, bore witness to Cinder's betrayal, and stood by as her pawns fell one by one. Hazel and Cinder's treachery came as something of a surprise, a novelty even. She hadn't thought them capable of it. Oh, they would suffer for their betrayal, but that was either here nor now. Raven's death didn't disturb her in the least. The girl had been a pawn, one controlled by fear. Losing the Spring Maiden was an annoyance at best. She'd served her purpose, and Haven's vault lay open. The Maidens had always been a means to an end. Summer was no more slain after she'd been forced to open the hidden vault in shade. Who knew where her power had gone? Fall was watched over by Ajbin day and night. Atlas kept winter under lock and key. Forfeiting the relic of destruction, however? That one actually stung a little. More than Salem would have liked to admit. Any relic lost was one she'd have to reclaim, and with many of her finest pawns gone, she knew she'd have to recruit from other circles. Forcefully, if need be. Tyrion had been little more than a raving madman, but the rest were a genuine loss to her. They would have to be replaced. Worse, it would take years to train up another maiden candidate. And so she began to dwell on that. Ways to take revenge, ways in which she could yet reclaim what she had lost. Such thoughts consumed her, drove her, spurred her onward. Until she saw the precise moment when Naruto brought Tyrion Kalos back to life. And that, well, that changed things. Changed quite a bit. Her traitorous heart flipped in her chest. A useful skill. Very useful indeed. How many times could he use it? Was there a limit? Were sacrifices required? Questions buzzed about in her head like angry rapier wasps. An ability like that shouldn't couldn't be wasted. What was the saying favored by this generation? If you can't beat them, join them. Yes, yes, that was the one. She'd convince him. Draw him out, pull him to her side. Salem leaned forward in her throne, watching with thinly veiled interest as the young man performed an even more spectacular feat. And as she watched, her mind flitted back to four little girls. Her daughters. Her children her family, her world, her all. It wasn't fair what happened to them. It was all Ozma's fault. If he hadn't tried to take them away that night, they never would have perished. But this was her chance. It was a slim hope, but hope nonetheless. She would bring this man to her side. She would have them restored. She would regain everything she'd lost. And then? Then she would see Ozma burn. I'll kill them all, Naruto. Hmm? The blonde hummed. I'm sorry, didn't quite catch that. Who are you going to kill this time? Who? Kagaya hissed in his head like a scalded cat. Cinder, you fool. I'll slaughter her and everything you hold dear. As far as threats went, Naruto didn't consider that to be a particularly good one. Not anymore. Oh, she earned some points for her venom and bile, to be sure but she lacked creativity. 
You could only threaten someone with the exact same words so many times before said words began to lose their edge. Throughout the ages, the rabid goddess had whispered the same threat to him time and again, ever swearing to rip away everything he came to care for. Once upon a time, Naruto had feared such warnings. In the beginning, when he'd first sealed Kagaya inside, he had sought to distance himself from the world, tried to hide away where he would never be a danger to anyone. A cold, lonely, miserable life, one that eventually took him out of his world and into another. Now he didn't even flinch as he dipped his brush into the ink pot, stirred once, and went to work. Is that all you have? He snorted into the silence of the morning. I'll kill them? You've made that threat before, old hag. This time will be your last. You think you can stop me a second time? An angry snarl greeted him as he wove fine strokes of ink upon the earth, all the while careful to leave his slumbering victim untouched. You can't hold me back forever. I don't have to stop you. Another stroke completed a fresh line of runic script around the soon-to-be corpse. I've already found a way. You're dead, Kagaya. You just haven't realized it yet. Just need to hold on long enough for someone else to do it. Dead? Me? Fool. I am eternal. Your thoughts betray you, no? She tried to read his thoughts, then scowled when he made no effort to hide them from her. Man, man. What have you done? You already know the answer, don't you? Naruto hummed as he continued his work. Go ahead. Read my mind. I'm an open book to you. Kagaya couldn't resist such temptation. Of course not. She was too greedy to refuse. She thought her victory was already assured and so parsed through his every thought, searching for a lie, only to find truth lurking in its place. They say the truth sets you free. This truth damned her. A wordless curse greeted him as he locked his thoughts away again, leaving her reeling. You, you used me, she roared. Me? How dare you? I am a goddess. You are but a mortal. You have no right. Don't I? Naruto's grin was just the wrong shade of vicious. All's fair in love and war, and there's something to be said about quality over quantity these days. There it was. For the first time since he bound her, he felt her fear. It was a heady thing indeed. Really, I should thank you. I already had Hazel on my side. Mercury and Emerald were wavering too, but your little outburst last night? Heh. When I take control, I shall make your friend scream, Naruto. This world will choke and die, cursing you with its final breath. See, now that was a creative threat. Pity he'd stopped fearing her. Hurts, doesn't it? Knowing you've been used. He chuckled anew, and her enraged silence warmed him more than words. You're right. I let you out. I could have fought you a bit longer, but I gave God to see just what she was up against, and that did more to earn her loyalty than anything I could have done. And in winning her to my side, Mercury and Emerald came with her. So, yeah? Thanks for that. Kagaya withdrew from his mind with one final curse. Lowering the worn tool to the loamy soil once more, Naruto continued to paint. Cinder and the rest looked on in quiet confusion as he worked, but they didn't interfere. They didn't dare. This might be his final chance to kill that blasted goddess once and for all. She'd not allow him another. It was this, or rip her out of his body and seal her somewhere else. Somewhere no one could find her. But that seal would break in time, unleashing her on the next generation unacceptable. Thus, he planned to drown her in bodies, to fling skilled fighters at her over and over until something stuck. And it was working. He'd already begun cultivating strong allies. Hazel could fight without feeling any pain for hours on end. Mercury was a lethal assassin, unmatched in the art of killing. Emerald's semblance was essentially a watered-down version of the Sharingan, sans the bullshit. Cinder had already broken her limits, and seemed to grow in strength every day. Assuming she got a hold of the remaining maidens, her powers would likely double, then triple, perhaps even quadruple. She was strong enough now already that she claimed the power of the Spring Maiden from Raven. What might she be like with three more under her belt and a relic fragments of a god? Held in each hand? A powerful distraction, if not an outright threat. 
And if he could resurrect or recruit more skilled fighters? Well, well, well. Naruto knew there was bitter irony in his thoughts there. In the beginning, Cinder had sought to use him, yet here he was, using her for his own ends. Rather, they were both using each other. Cinder certainly knew that his motives weren't entirely altruistic. Nor were hers. That was fine. He didn't mind being used by her, so long as she allowed him to use her in turn. That's what partners did, right? He cared for her, of course, just as she cared for him, but they both wanted Kagaya dead and gone. She wasn't a good person, but neither was he. Anyone who kept reviving the dead denying them their rest wasn't right in the head. With one final stroke, he finished painting the intricate seal and stepped back to let the ink dry. Brushing down his knees, Naruto climbed to his feet and took a step back. All right, then, he declared. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? All eyes turned to Cinder, and for once, she didn't bask in the attention. Instead, her eyes strayed to her ally lover? Mentor? Partner? As he finished painting the final seal at her feet and rose to his own, brush still dripping with glossy black ink. She watched him take his victim and deposit them in the center of the array, all the while careful not to disturb his handiwork. I'd say Neil and Hazel are owed their dues, wouldn't you agree? He sounded so damn chipper about it, the bastard. Hazel looked to her. Are all these preparations really necessary? Don't ask me. Cinder fought down a grimace. I've not seen this before. In hindsight, it seemed such a silly thing to ask. She stood as living proof that such a thing was indeed possible. Were it not for Naruto, she'd be dead in a ditch somewhere. It wasn't a matter of, if, here, only how. Naruto had conquered death. He'd shackled it, made it his slave, a beast to obey his bidding. And now she tied her fate to his. Salem would never forgive this betrayal. Well, they'd just have to deal with her then, wouldn't they? Kagaya too. Two goddesses. Ha! A tiny, hysteric giggle echoed in the back of Cinder's head. Idiot. You're all going to die. Raven's tattered soul hissed in her mind. If Kagaya doesn't get you, Salem will. You've doomed yourselves. Cinder ignored the fearful woman as her eyes trailed across the intricate seals and glyphs, taking them all in turn. All the while, Tyrion continued to drool mindlessly at her feet, a chilling reminder of Naruto's abilities. The blonde had dragged him back to life, and yet he hadn't. His body lived anew, that much was true, but his already fractured psyche had been irrevocably shattered by the rabbit goddess before his demise. There was nothing of him to bring back. Only an empty, drooling husk remained. His brain had atrophied. His body just hadn't realized it yet. Like an engine running on fumes, ready to die at any given moment. Then there was the matter of what's. Another sacrifice, once Mercury finished interrogating him. She shivered slightly. Salem's enemies died once. That was the end of it. Here? Death wasn't the end for Naruto's adversaries. If you wronged him and tried to escape into that black abyss, he'd drag you back. Keep raising you until you broke. A torment unending. Cinder suddenly found herself grateful that she'd chosen his side all the same. What of Raven? Hazel inquired. I noticed you didn't revive her. Yes, what about me? The voice in Cinder's head perked up immediately. What about her? Naruto crossed his arms. Even if I could revive her. I won't. Raven clammed up. Cinder took perverse pleasure in the sudden pang of fear that followed. You mean you can't? This from Emerald. Clever girl. Naruto's hand descended to muss her hair. Long story short? Her soul's tangled up with the power of the Spring Maiden. His arm pulled away as he held up a lecturing finger. It'll fade given enough time. But even then I likely won't be able to properly return her to life. I had a hell of a time reviving Cinder at all because of it, and she was freshly dead. He shrugged. I had to get, inventive to bring her back to life. Wasn't sure my idea would work, until it did. Cinder's world went cold as a pit opened in her stomach. What did you do to me? Didn't you find it odd? A blonde brow rose in mild confusion. You recovered so quickly gained all your strength back and more. 
Yet you didn't stop there. His words continued to fracture her resolve. You surpassed your limits time and time again. You managed to stand on equal footing with a goddess, if only for a time. Naruto! The other brow rose. I cut off a tiny piece of my soul and fused it with yours. His honest smile hurt her, if only because he genuinely thought he'd helped her. That's all I did. Honest! He raised his hands when she conjured a fireball in her right hand. It weakened me a little, but it was enough to bind you to your body. Don't worry, you're still you. Just better. Faster. Stronger. Cinder inhaled, feeling her fury rise to a boiling point. Then she exhaled. The fire guttered out in her palm. This mustn't register on an emotional level, she told herself. If she allowed her feelings to have their way, her temper would surely blaze out of control, and she'd do or say something she might come to regret. Breathe. This changed nothing. At the end of the day, she was still herself. Her emotions were still her own. Her mind was her own. Her strength was her own. She'd pushed herself to regain her power and more. Naruto had simply unlocked her potential. Yes. That was it, and any other foolish thoughts wouldn't be tolerated. Why? The words still emerged as a croak. Why do all this for me? Because I knew someone like you once. His smile became a scowl. I didn't help them, didn't reach out until it was too late. Her hands balled into fists at her sides. What became of that person? They died. But you won't. You're going to be something special, Cinder. There was something odd about those words, something that resonated deep within her. Even I don't know what your limits are anymore. I hope I live long enough to see what you become. Oddly enough, those words warmed Cinder. Well, that simplified things, didn't it? He was hers. No one else could have his broken, benighted soul. Emerald coughed. Ma'am, I hate to ruin the moment, but Neo's getting antsy. The little minx hadn't budged an inch for the last five minutes. She'd been silent as the grave. Cinder risked a glance at her, only to find the girl's mismatching eyes locked on Tyrion's still form. A frightful anger lurked in their depths, shadowed by the tiniest ember of hope. It was almost too painful to see. If something went wrong, if this failed, she'd be shattered. Deed's done, boss. Mercury's voice called from across the clearing. What sang like a canary? Cinder try sucking your face off again? The spring maiden twitched. To his credit, Naruto didn't respond as the assassin sauntered to their side. He knew that would set her off. Mercury noticed it too. So, how does this thing work? The assassin ventured quickly before Cinder could eviscerate him for his slip. I'm glad you asked. Naruto clapped his hands, and Cinder did her best to ignore the bloody ink still staining his fingers black. This jutsu's a little different from the one I normally like to use, so it requires a good deal of preparation. It's different if someone died recently. For instance, Tyrion died recently, and right in front of me at that. Bringing him back was easy. His soul was nearby, I just had to guide it to his body and force it to stay. His mind was another matter. I can't fix that. The faunus continued to drool at their feet. Not sure if I want to. Naruto turned aside and spat. For those who died ages ago, it's not a simple matter of finding their souls and bringing them back. He paused for effect, raising his arms. Roman doesn't even have a body to house his soul anymore. Which means I need to construct a container for it. And how do we house a soul, children? With a sacrifice, Hazel echoed, eyes widening. Precisely. Blue eyes flashed. That's why I hate this jutsu. Enough grandstanding. Cinder wrinkled her nose. Begin the ritual, would you? Hold your horses, hothead. The sage chided gently. First, I require a bit of DNA. Neo? She skipped forward and presented him with an old bowler hat, battered and worn. Black. Filthy thing. Thanks. Naruto dipped a hand inside it respectfully, then handed it back to her. Got a few strands of hair. It'll have to do. Stand back now, would you? Don't want anyone caught up in this. Mercury. Cinder snapped. Make certain no one from the village observes us. 
It wouldn't do for this to be seen. Perhaps it was a little petty of her to send him away, but she wasn't in the mood for his snark. If he wanted to act like a child, then he would be treated like one. Damn, mom. Of course, he didn't go quietly. Why you gotta be such a party pooper? A black brow arched at him. What was that? Not a thing. Going now. Bye. The assassin scampered. Naruto didn't chuckle at their little fiasco. He simply opened his hands and pressed them together. What followed could only be called a blur. Cinder watched him twist his fingers into strange shapes and felt something stir in the air. His mismatching eyes seemed to burn with faint flames, blue and violet seething impossibly bright. Beside her, she felt Neo stiffen. Mercury muttered a curse as the ink around Tyrion pulsed the blinding white. An emerald shrank behind her as though to seek shelter from whatever was about to emerge. Hazel remained stoic as ever, until Naruto spoke. Edo Tensei, he declared soundly. By the gods! Hazel sucked in a sharp breath through his teeth as strands of ashen paper erupted from the earth to entangle Tyrion from head to toe. Countless hands, grasping and snatching, dragging him down. In his final moments, the Faunus must have realized what was happening because his eyes widened, and he managed an awful gurgle. Then he was gone, suffocated to death once more, mummified by ash. All that remained was a shriveled-up corpse. Cinder shivered again despite herself. That looked like a bad way to go. What now? Emerald spoke into the silence that followed. Now I create a new body for Roman, using Tyrion as a catalyst. Naruto informed them. The blonde slammed his hands together, and sure enough, the ash began to peel like bad wallpaper. Slowly at first, then with increasing speed, the strands of ghastly paper unwove themselves, crumbling from Tyrion's body to fall onto the floor. Cinder half expected to see his face beneath, but no, a familiar visage stood in its place. As the Jutsu pulled back from the man's battered head, she beheld a miracle. Roman Torchwick snarled. Oh, what the hell is this? Narrow eyes leered back at them, framed by orange hair and a furious scowl. Who are you? I was having a nice nap, too. Neo gasped soundlessly and tried to pounce on her partner. Naruto snagged the tiny girl by the scruff of her neck and reeled her back in like a fish, uncaring of her scowl. Calm down, would you? He hummed and drew a strange ceiling tag from his jacket pocket instead. I haven't finished the jutsu. He'll be right as rain in a moment. Just hold still now. Roman choked out an angry breath as the blonde rammed it into the back of his neck and buried it deep within his unnatural body. Roman's pallid visage regained some color and those dead eyes began to glow with some semblance of life, burning now with a burning yet unnatural pallor. With a ponderous creak, he began to move his limbs, forcing himself up from his knees into a stumbling stagger. Even then, he glared bloody daggers at them all. The moment he saw her, he absolutely hissed. Why couldn't you let me stay dead, you awful bitch? A finger jabbed against her skull, seeking her gray matter. I wanted to rest. And so you did. Cinder couldn't quite keep the smile from her face as she batted his hand away. Now we have need of you again. You should be grateful. Grateful? Well, there went the last of her doubts. This was undoubtedly Roman. Right down to the mascara. She didn't pity him. He'd served his purpose and perished for it. Even if he'd survived the assault on Beacon, she would have killed him to ensure his silence. It wasn't anything personal. Just business. He had always been a pawn, and sometimes pawns must be sacrificed in the game that was life. For a moment, she thought Roman was actually going to attack her, until Naruto stepped aside, and Neo slammed into him like a heat-seeking missile. Umph. Just like that, all the heat in the man's eyes died as she collided with him. Neo, what the hell? What are you doing here? Neo didn't answer. Instead, she offered him his hat and cane. A rare, almost sentimental look flitted across the thief's pallid face as he accepted them. After a moment's consideration, Roman dusted the dirty bowler hat off and donned it once more. Balancing himself on his favored weapon, the gentleman thief seemed to stand just a little bit taller than before. Anybody got a smoke? He asked. Naruto offered him one and granted him a light. 
Ah, that's the stuff. Roman inhaled deeply and exhaled in a hearty plume of smoke. He seemed more himself for it, Cinder noted. I needed that. Taking another moment to compose himself, that, or satisfy his tobacco fix, the master thief took a wary step backward, careful to keep Neo between him and the rest of the world. So? Who's this mook? He sneered at her. Did you recruit him, too? Did he get the same retirement package as me? Cinder hissed. Her face was on fire, she just knew it. Not quite. Naruto put in glibly. Our partnership is a little more personal than that. Wait, wait. Roman guffawed. You're kidding, right? No. Oh my gods. He snickered, laughed, then outright cackled, slapping his knee as he outright hooted at her. I can't believe it. Someone actually did it. You tamed her. I didn't think it was possible. Ha! Huh. His grin turned downright vicious. What's she like? Must be a real firebrand under the sheets, eh? Cinder felt her mouth twist. My, my. Aren't we mouthy today? Flames flickered at her fingertips, longing to lash out and consume him whole. I don't recall you having this much of a death wish the last time we spoke, Roman. I'm already dead, sweetheart. He leered back at her. What are you gonna do? Kill me again? Think I fancy my chances this time. Neo's expression put paid to that, and fresh fire bloomed in Cinder's eyes. I can certainly try. You sure you don't want me to leave him like this? Naruto spoke again, but this time his words were directed at Neo, rather than herself. He's not properly reincarnated yet, but as he is now, he's basically indestructible and immortal. When her eyes lit up, he was just as quick to dash her hopes. He can't feel anything, Mio. Food will have no taste. Pain means nothing to him. No, less than nothing. His words drew a grimace from her as he barreled on. It's not something he'd enjoy. From here, I can make him flesh and blood again, but that's up to you. What don't I get a say in this? Roman groused. Cinder rolled her eyes. This from the man who was eaten by a griffin? Yeah, no. Emerald seconded. That's not happening. You're lucky to be alive. No. Hazel put in quickly. No, you do not. I hate you all so much right now. Cinder would have said yet more if someone hadn't come crashing through the undergrowth like an angry berserker. She bristled and nearly summoned her blades on the spot. It was only a flash of silver hair that stilled her raging reflexes. Even then, she couldn't quite quell the fleeting sense of dread brought on by his arrival. Mercury! I told you to watch the perimeter! She hissed. Yeah, about that. The assassin drawled with a grin, trailing one hand behind him. I did. Found a little rat skulking about. His grin grew, just an inch. He had a prisoner, too, said something about making an exchange with us. You know anything about that, boss? Oh. Naruto muttered less than eloquently. I might. Yup. Thought so. Chuckling softly, Mercury turned and hauled someone out of the bush behind him. It did little to ease Cinder's paranoia. This so-called rat he spoke of was little more than a young man, blonde hair and blue eyes all. Clad in odd armor with a sword at his side, battered blue jeans, and was that a hoodie? Dear gods, it was. Who even wore such a thing? Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. To make matters worse, the stranger took one look at her and all but snarled. You. Why are you here? I'll kill you. I'm sorry. Cinder blinked in genuine confusion. Did she know this boy? Have we met before? She was sure they had. Didn't his name start with a J or some such? You, you monster! Murderer! How could you? Roman hissed. Oh, what the hell? It was the wrong thing to say because it set the teen into a frothing frenzy. Blue eyes flashed wildly as he howled and raged against Mercury, to no avail. For all his fire and fury, the assassin held him fast. When he tried to break free, the older boy swept the blonde's legs, stomped down onto his chest, and pinned him to the floor with an iron boot. When he went for his sword, Emerald swept in to kick it out of his hand. Mercury stepped back, and quite suddenly, 
Hazel was there plucking him off the ground to ram him against a tree. I remember this one. He growled. He's from Beacon. Sir? Emerald asked. What should we do with him? Cinder turned a questioning eye on Naruto. Yes, what indeed? They had to kill him, of course. If he was here, then that meant Ashpen and the others couldn't be far behind. And if they let him go, he was sure to run squealing back to that parasite. He had to die. She could have killed him easily enough. She was almost tempted to, if only out of principle. One did not leave an enemy at your back. And yet, a pang of curiosity stayed her hand. Naruto clearly knew this fool, somehow. But when? Where? How? She wanted answers. Answers a corpse could not provide. In the end, Naruto surprised her. He always did. Really, he should have known better by now, the sentimental fool. Let him up. He released a long-suffering sigh. I made him a promise. And I keep my promises. Thank you for watching our YouTube video. Your support means the world to us. We hope you enjoyed the content and had a fantastic time immersing yourself in our anime universe. Don't forget to give credit to the author. Their info can be found in the description. If you loved what you saw, we kindly ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with all our latest releases and join a community of passionate anime enthusiasts. Don't forget to check out the video description for links to other exciting videos. We have a treasure trove of anime content waiting for you to explore. Once again, thank you for being a part of our anime journey. Your support keeps our passion alive.